Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Medical Futurist Facebook Live video. I'm Bertolo Meshko, I'm the Medical Futurist, and I hope that by this time you know that you can find me on medicalfuturist.com and you can subscribe to the free newsletter about the exciting news regarding the future of medicine and healthcare, again on medicalfuturist.com. Today it's quite an exciting video for me too because uh, we unpack a brand new medical device and I'm talking about the Vive, W-I-W-E, a medical device in, in the case of which I was a consultant in the very first initial phase of the device, I gave suggestions to the company about how to use their initial idea when developing the product, but now I'm quite excited to see how it works out in action and we will unpack the Vive and I will try that live with my smartphone as well. So the Vive's idea was that Professor Cosman had a great algorithm using electroencephalogram, EKG, you know, the electrophysiology of our heart. And they used the algorithm to predict, or at least to assess the, the risk for stroke and sudden cardiac death, you know, quite serious conditions. And it would be amazing to know the risk that you have based on a, an EKG readings, but there are not really good uh, devices for that. So as we are live, please feel free to ask any questions. I would like to check them live right here. And let's do that. Let's unpack the Vive. This is just the package I received the Vive, but here is the, the thing that we are the most interested in. And the company was quite uh, kind to send, me a, to send me this as well, like a small pocket for the Vive device. So that's all we have. I love this initial logo or symbol. You know, it represents the electrocardiogram, but also the Vive, the W is in there. Uh, yeah. Either way it works, doesn't matter. <laughs> so let's see what we have here. This is the Vive device. Now it's quite, it's quite a thin design. And what I loved about even the first idea was that it's, it's looks, looks like a business card. It's really thin. It's quite um, uh, maybe a few grams. The weight is quite okay. I love the design. I know that it comes in two colors, white and black. And what the company wanted to do with the first idea was to create something that anyone can just, you know, hold in their pocket or, uh, yeah, and, and whenever you want to use it, just grab it and you can do an, uh, a reading. And even though you cannot see the result here, it could be transmitted to the smartphone wirelessly through our Bluetooth. And that's why it's, that's why the design is quite okay. I mean, anyone could uh, just hold it in the in the pocket of theirs. That's my, the, my favorite part is this when I remove. Ah, oh, I love this. All right, so the white vibe. I also dive into the box that we have here. I assume that we might have you know a few instructions about how to use the vibe and where to find the the smartphone app. Uh, they have an application on Android and on iOS as well. You know, it's quite obvious these days. And there's a micro USB charger. So hopefully today that's going to be charged enough, charged enough to, to use the Vive Live. So, let's see it in action. I open up the Vive application. There it is. And I will go step by step with you. Um, I haven't tried it so far. So it seems like we haven't logged in, so we need to create a... Uh -huh, maybe this way. Oh, here it is, the next step. Okay, I can log in through Facebook or Google Plus or just by entering my name. Let me, sorry, let me do that first. I have to accept the terms and conditions accept it next so bluetooth connection it now is looking for my vibe device i guess i need to just push this button here okay it's live i love this kind of design that the, the green color goes through the vibe logo you know representing the the electrocardiogram itself okay it seems that it seems that the the smartphone found the device it seems it's okay. So enabled, okay. Next step, uh, okay. Now, let's do a recording. Let's see 
what a device can do. I will try to do it in a way that you can see both the smartphone and my VAG device. Let's do a new recording. Okay, this way. I just have to hold it comfortably like this. Preparing to record. So in about six seconds, it's going to record my EKG. It's going to record my the, the blood oxygen levels that I have and also my pulse. As you can see, it takes one minute precisely one minute to finish the recording. What we see now is my uh, one channel EKG. That'll be, you know, the, the possible 12 channels. My pulse is 75. I'm a bit, you know, nervous and excited about this reading. My blood oxygen level is 97%. Above 95, it's all right, so I should be okay. You know, many devices can measure these things with, oops, but what I'm really interested in is uh, what happens when it starts analyzing my EKG and what kind of things it can find and how we can dive into the details of the EKG data. I'm a physician myself, but I, I don't uh, analyze EKG on a daily basis, so it will be great to, to be able to dive into the details. So a few seconds left. I'm still very excited. You can see based on my pulse. Usually my pulse is about 60 or 55. Now it's over 70. I can release the electrodes now evaluation is in progress. Maybe you could see on the device, but it was quite cool how the, the green light went through the Vive logo in those 60, 60 seconds. So here is the evaluation screen. All right. I guess we get here uh, a description of the signals. Green means I'm fine. Yellow is something I should take care of. And red is not really good. First, my oxygen level was 97. And as you can see on the scale, between 95 and 100, it's all right. My pulse was 77. I guess uh, it was a bit high. But again, I'm quite nervous using it for the first time. And we can dive into the details just like this. There was a small, de Jesus Christ, there was a small deviation <laughs> detected uh, in my EKG parameters. But um, I will try to uh, record it again. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm fine. I actually use many of these devices on a daily basis. AR, arrhythmia, there was no significant heart rate fluctuation present, okay? And this is the ventricular repolarization heterogeneity. It's, you know, it's quite a medical term, uh, which is hard to uh, understand, but they try to describe what it actually means um, for us. And there was a, a claim in the initial press release about the myocardial status that uh, they can assess by using these uh, electrodes. So now one by one, let's dive into the details. Info. Okay, this is just about the, uh, the basic terms and descriptions about the EKG. What I'm really interested in is, okay, here are the details. Let's see the details. All right. You see, the reason why I detected some anomalies in my EKG was that I had a bit longer uh, QRS um, period. I can also see the EKG curve, okay, uh -huh. I can maybe zoom in, no, yeah, zoom in and out, okay, I guess I can also share it with, uh, with a colleague of mine if I want to, or I can download it in, in some format, okay, now I'm trying to go back, here it is, EKG parameters, basic size, wow, that's uh, quite detailed, I mean, I guess someone really good at electrophysiology uh, could be helpful here to, to describe the details here. It seems like I'm that uh, black dot and I'm in the, the green part. So regarding the, the myocardial status, I should be all right. Okay, I can go back now. One, two, three, and even more. And what else can I do? I can just share, leave a note for myself, like when doing this analysis, did I have any exercises, uh, drinking alcohol, uh, indoor position, dizziness, what, you know, what kind of symptoms I felt, if any, and what pills or drugs I take, and whether I have any comments, like in, in what, under what circumstances I had the recording. All right, I can share this. Let's see how I can share it. I don't have any contacts yet, but it seems that, as you can see, uh, I guess in the settings, I can add contacts to send my recordings via email. That's, um, yeah, I can also, I guess, do this here. Mm -hmm. I can just add names and emails 
and I can send the recordings to them directly in a, in a private line. So I would love to go after this yellow part, so let's do a, a new reading again. I want to make sure I'm fine on the long term. I hope that you can see everything like right here. So a few seconds, few more seconds, and that's going to start the recording. Uh, it's really comfortable to hold it. it. It literally is like a business card. So we start again. Well, almost a minute left. Okay, my pause is a bit better now. It seems like I need some time in the okay in the Facebook Live session to to get comfortable myself. Uh, my le left thumb is on the sensor that can measure the blood oxygen levels and I'm holding two metal sensors to, to do the EKG recording, as you can imagine. Uh, th they had a claim, uh, the company had a claim in the press release that the algorithm that they use is more than 98% accurate. So we need to go after that. And they don't need a Holter monitoring, a 24 hours monitoring system. They just, you, know, you can just give the vibe to your elderly uh, parents and they can use it whenever they want. They don't even have to know how to use a smartphone because they just hold the device, the information will be sent wirelessly to the smartphone and even you can access the smartphone app from a distance. So this way we can take care of our elderly patient, uh, parents and patients uh, even from a distance. All right, I release the electrodes. The vibe is getting ready. Oh, I see, I just, gamification is in progress. Only one measurement is left for me, then I go get some you know, new kind of information. Okay, no, no. I'm going to be all right. Everyone can be calm now. Everything is green here. Um, the pulse is 81. The oxygen saturation is all right. And my EKG is, is okay. I just had a question on the Facebook page about how to get the device. Well, myvive.com, my and w-i-w-e.com is where you can find it. Um, yeah. Um, so what, what else can we do here? I can use, oh, it's quite a brilliant design. So that's my white elegant vibe, and I can just get it out like this. I don't know whether I have to turn it off or it's auto, okay, I turn it off, it's good. I can turn it on just like this. I love this design with the vibe and, and the EKG format. So that's the vibe what we've got here. Um, I'm pretty sure that I will keep on discovering it and testing it so many times. I will use it in different, under different circumstances, uh, during speeches, I like to do such things. Um, I will use that uh, to compare it to other, the results from other devices that can also record EKG. There are many others like a live core or Viatom checking, which I've been using for some time. What I like about this is certainly the design and the fact that I, I can do a recording and I don't have to use or be able to use a smartphone to, to see the results. Uh, I also love the, the kind of details we get based on um, the EKG that it measures. So um, I'm pretty fine with it. The application is, is it's in infancy. It might need some more dynamic features in the future, but that's all right. I mean, anyone can dive into that and, and check their own EKG in just seconds. Um, I see that you have some questions about still how to get the Vive. Uh, the website's, uh, the address is myvive.com. Uh, so my, M-Y-W-I-W-E.com. You get all the details on the website about um, what it can measure basically, what kind of prediction it can give about stroke and, and the risk for uh, sudden cardiac death. Uh, the website is, is quite detailed uh, from this perspective. And um, you can also find out if you need some support technologically, but now they have um, good um, iOS and Android applications. And I'm just checking for the last time whether you have any more. It, it, someone said that it looks so useful. Yeah, that, that's the case. And I hope that a swarm of such medical devices will reach us quite soon so we can just you know use smart but still safe and regulated devices to to measure basic vital signs and health parameters about our lives. I'm not saying that these should replace medical devices because they shouldn't, but we should have the chance to, to get more and more information about our health so we can actually make uh, meaningful and informed decisions about our health. Without data, no system can be improved. And I, I'm, I know I'm always, I'm always saying that, but 
technology cannot change your lifestyle, only we can change your lifestyle with good technologies. Besides the why doing an EKG analysis in details and giving us scores about or, or predictions about stroke and sudden cardiac death, it can also measure the number of steps one takes a day. I mean, if you go back to the main screen, then and you go to profile, I mean, I haven't finished it so far, but there's a fitness spot, as you can see, so it measures the number of steps you take a day. It's like a fitness tracker looking like a business card and having the same weight as a business card. In the, and in the meantime, uh, from time to time, you can do your own analysis. And let's just dive into information. Well, you get some medical information about, I guess, the predictions that it makes about stroke and how, what EKG, what EKG does and what, what you can learn about when you check the results of your EKG recording. What is atrial fibrillation? Why it's so important? in uh, predicting such risks for serious conditions, what, what they mean by um, myocardial status here, what you need to do about, what you need to know about the pulse and, and uh, fluctuating heart rates and the blood, blood oxygen levels. Um, so it's you know, quite detailed information uh, to, to learn more about the health of your heart, um, the heart or the physiology of the heart. It seems like we can change accounts so even more users can, can, have, can use the same Y with the same application and still they have their own profiles and their own recordings. And if a recording is not transmitted automatically to the application, then it seems that we can manually synchronize that. It actually helps. So that's what we have about the Y. If you have any more questions, um, even after this video is over, please leave them on the Facebook page and I will keep on answering all of them. And please note that next week I will have a genetic test live. So that's going to be an unpacking of a genetic test. I will give my sample. I will you know, open up almost physiologically and literally to you, and we can discuss why a genetic test can be useful or, or useless in predicting your, the future of your own health. So if you have any questions, please get, go to the Facebook page of Medical Futurist or to medicalfuturist.com, and see you next week. Thank you for watching.